It's not like you get, no one gives you like training. Like, how do you deal with critics? How do you deal with the public? How do you deal with total strangers turning up in your front door? Uh, which happened, you know? I'm like, I'm like standing there in my underwear. I, I've got a script I want to pitch to you. Well, why are you talking to me? I'm a writer. <laughs> You're just someone who makes them. Um, and by the way, I'm in my underwear. It's like <laughs> not, you know, having to sign an autograph, going to, uh, going to the shop to buy a pint of milk. I mean, it was just <laughs> weird things. And no one trains you in how to deal with that. No one trains you uh, like someone who's gushing at you one minute and then you turn the corner and someone's saying, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm disappointed in you, Stel. Well, who are you? I don't know who you are. And why should I be listening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it, it's, it, it was really, it, it was a real batshit, uh, situation and I just couldn't I couldn't deal and so I just I just walked away from it um, and uh, just concentrate on writing some books for a while and then my wife and moved to America um, but yeah I mean life's been interesting since um, yeah, I've been homeless twice uh, I worked uh, I was working in um, Home Depot for a while mixing paint for ten dollars an hour like and i've been there like two years when someone the, the penny dropped for someone and they realized i'd written that movie and it turned out two people in that in that store it was their favorite movie of all time oh fantastic and i couldn't believe i was working with them like selling you know drills and shit <laughs> you know it was like kind of i've i've been through an interesting life afterwards um uh and you know it's only as i say it's only in the last few years i've started going back so you probably i don't know if you've seen it on quest i just hosted a tv show on the discovery channel oh we're um, hunting atlantis yeah looking for atlantis and stuff uh you know that's a whole but i was actually prepared this time so when the critics came i just unleashed i'm like i don't know who you are but i'm gonna tell you this time because i don't give a fuck i'm now 51 <laughs> so, no, I mean, when, when the movie got made, I was 29, and I didn't come from a movie making background. I didn't come from any of that, um, and so uh, you never know what life's gonna, you know, throw at you. But but uh, I've been through so many twists and turns in life now that I look back fondly on the 51st day as you crazy motherfucker. It was like only the arrogance of being in your 20s thinking you could do this accounts for what happened. Um, but then when you talk to other people and you're like, hey, you got into the business, and I'm like, well, why don't you do this? Or why don't you do this? And blah, 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 blah. The vast majority of them were born into it. It's a, it's a family business, movie mm -hmm. making, you know? Um, there are people that come from outside, you know, all the time. Um, but you know, it, it turns out that when you really dig deep into it, it's like, well, I don't come from the movie business, but yeah, but then you went to college and your best mate ended up being someone who did. So you can't, you can't really make, <laughs> you know, say that you didn't know anybody. I mean, I literally knew nobody. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of proud that I managed to get it done. Um, I wish I'd had more tools at my disposal psychologically to deal with it because then I'd probably made like 20 or 30 movies since then. Um, because believe me, I've got enough stories in notebooks that it would be on my lifetime to take to make. Uh, and so now I'm just trying to sort of catch up with it. But, um, but it, it's, uh, and the other thing that I'm like, I like now that's different from then is that movies are now cheaper to make. It's shot digitally, so you can put more of that money into effects. Um, people are more willing to watch a movie without the big names. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and also all these streaming services. There are so many different outlets for content now that you get to experiment. When I made that movie, it was an experiment, and there weren't many experiments anybody was willing to bet on. Now there's experiments all over the place. Yeah. And there's so much content, and there's fewer of what I call these sort of mean critics who are just paid to just exist to destroy everybody. They're not really out there anymore. People don't listen to them as much anymore. And so you are allowed to experiment and you can, you can do some stuff and you're not sure if it's going to work. But even if it doesn't work for that 
for, for like a billion dollar audience, it's still going to work for a niche and it's still going to make its money back. Um, and so the environment now has shifted to creators and it's fantastic. And I'm looking at stuff that's being made that would never have been made when mine came out. And it's just like, and I'm like, oh, this is like, it's like the golden age now of, of, of uh, content. And, and I'm, it's exciting. And that's why I think I'm, I'm ready to sort of step back into it. Um, because it's like, it, it, there's, no, there's, less, there's less fear of total sort of destruction 